Welcome everyone to the first of hopefully many Daily Camera Sports Roundtable Discussions. I am Chris Schmedeke, Assistant Sports Editor at the Daily Camera, and today we're going to talk about the NCAA Tournament with both BuffZone.com writers. To my right, Brian Howell. To my left, Kyle Ringo. So I'm going to ask these guys some questions. They're going to give opinions, and um, so our first topic is going to be, we're going to keep it local, and we're going to talk about the Askia Booker situation and him not playing in the CBI. So Brian, I'll start with you. Um, He's got a lot of criticism. He's also gotten support. Where do you sit on the situation? Well, I, I'm totally fine with his decision to not play. I agree with it. I think it's best for the Buffs that he not play because of this tournament is for them to get better for next year. So I agree with that decision. I don't like the way he went about it and the way CU went about it by not making him available to everybody um, and basically him having me having to track him down right. to get his, his reaction to it. I think that it caused... By him not being out in front with his comments, I think it caused this to become a national story. Okay. Kyle, how do you feel about the whole situation? Yeah, I think if you're part of the team, you're part of the team, and you should play until the season's over. Right. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I guess I come down on the side that a ski of Booker should be playing, and, and uh, you know, I know that they want to get young guys more time and get a look at what next year's team is going to look like, but they have plenty of time to do that in the summer. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see why they couldn't do that with Booker on the bench and, you know, just dial back his minutes a, a little bit. I, I just think uh, the whole situation was poorly handled on, in, on everybody's part. And how do you guys feel about the whole Dustin Thomas thing? He's going to leave the team. Was he just the wrong fit? Was he just not performing up to Tad's expectations? What yeah, I, I think that, uh, I mean, really, that's just a playing time thing. And, and I don't read anything more into that because he is still practicing with the team. There's no ill will either way. Um, you know, Tad basically said the other day that Dustin wants to play on the perimeter, and Tad wants Dustin to play right. on the low post. Dustin doesn't want that, so he's moving on to try to find something else. So I think I think I don't think there's any more to it than that. Yeah, me either. I mean, it's college basketball. Guys transfer all the time. I mean. There's an epidemic of transfers in, in men's college basketball, right. and so uh, it's you know just par for the course. Okay, now we're going to go national. We're going to talk NCAA tournament. I guess we're going to kind of stay a little local and with talk about the Pac-12. Arizona is clearly the best team out of the Pac-12. I mean, they roll through the Pac-12 tourney. Any other team in the Pac-12 make any noise in the tournament? And honestly, does UCLA even belong in the tournament? We'll start with Brian. <laughs> uh, well, the, the first part, I think Utah can be a Sweet 16 team. Um, I like the use. They have a tough first round matchup actually with, with Stephen the Foss. And I mean, if they can get through that though, I think they can get to the Sweet 16, um, where I think they uh, would meet Duke. Um, and I, I don't see them getting through that one. But I think they can make the Sweet 16. Oregon, uh, they're going to run up against Wisconsin in the second round if they get there. And not, that's not a good matchup for them. <laughs> Wisconsin <laughs> plays too good a defense. And, and uh, UCLA, I mean, the team that I watched the Pac-12 tournament last week was definitely an NCAA tournament team. They gave Arizona the best run. Yeah, and they looked good throughout that tournament. They were definitely an NCAA tournament team, but body of work, no. They shouldn't be in the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of UCLA, that's not an NCAA tournament team. It's a joke that they got in. It's a joke that they got in where they got in. If they're if you're going to put that team in the NCAA, double, NCAA tournament, they should have been playing in the first four. They should be in Dayton. Right. They shouldn't right. have been automatically seated and just. It, right. it, it's a joke, and it, it is about the body of work. I mean, they they might have played a couple of tough games um, mm-hmm. in the Pac-12 tournament, but. You know, it's about what they did over the course of the year, and they don't have the resume to be here. Yeah, I, I, I tweeted it during their game against Arizona that I can't believe that that was the same team I watched in Boulder on January 2nd because that right. team was just, yeah. was terrible. I mean, yeah. CU beat them in Boulder, and you know, that was kind of, and that was without Josh Scott <laughs> that CU beat them. You know, and it was the first game without Josh Scott, so it's not like they had had time to get used to it. And uh, so, yeah, body of work. I mean, CSU should have been in this tournament over UCLA. There's a couple teams that should have been in over UCLA. Yeah, I think uh, Stephen F. Austin is going to beat Utah, so you and I are opposed there. Oh, there you go. And uh, I think Oregon will get beat. And Arizona, I'm not sure they go all the way to the Final Four because I think Wisconsin might get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to come down to those two teams. So that bracket, you just kind of put those two teams and then just fill in the, in the Elite <laughs> Eight and go back. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. Okay, so 
going completely, I mean, all national on this. Kentucky, undefeated. Um, everyone, you know, is picking them. Is there anybody who can actually give them a run? We'll start with Kyle. Yeah, I think there's been a few teams that, that have given them a run already, and I think, uh, you know, if a, a Virginia team gets there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to the national semifinals, I think they could do it. Duke could do it. Uh, you know, there's a Wisconsin certainly could, and for that matter, so could Arizona, if you ask me. Right. So I think there are a, a small collection of teams that could beat Kentucky. I mean, there's been numerous teams in the past who, who've uh, – you know, been heavily favored to, to win the NCAA tournament and haven't gotten it done. And uh, I think, I actually think this is going to be another case of that. And how do you feel about the whole undefeated thing? Do you think they should have lost the game to kind of loosen them up? No, I don't, I don't no. ever think you should <laughs> lose a game. I, I think you should, you're always out there to win. And, and uh, you know, I, I get what you're saying, though. It, it seems like when you get on such a large streak like this, the pressure right. mounts all the time. But, I think they're kind of used to that, and I, I do think Kentucky's going to get to the second weekend, maybe even the third weekend before it loses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't have Kentucky winning this thing. I would like them better if they had a loss. Uh, the SEC's not that strong of a conference, and they struggled in a lot of their games, so yeah. that makes me worry about them a little bit coming in, but I didn't like them going into last year's tournament, and they made a run to the championship game, So, uh, and this team's better than that, so they might prove me wrong, but I think there's a lot of teams. Kyle mentioned a bunch of them. Um, I like a team like Baylor. You know, the, they could be a surprise yeah. team. Uh, they play really well. So there, I think there's a lot of teams that could beat them. I don't know if anybody will, but right. I think there's a lot that could. All right, and of course, talking NCAA tournament, you got to talk upsets. Um, who do you guys think is a possible upset? And you know, there's always the 12 beat and the mm -hmm. five. Who's your Who's your 12? We'll start, Brian. Well, Kyle mentioned one. I, I, I agree with you that Stephen F. Austin is going to be a tough matchup for Utah. I still think Utah is going to win. But if I had to pick a 12 over a 5, it'd be Buffalo uh, beating West Bobby Virginia. Bobby Hurley's team. Yeah, and yeah. that's been a popular one. But uh, I like that Buffalo team. They gave uh, Kentucky a good game right yeah. this year. So um, as far as the 12 over 5, I like that one. Um, I think Eastern Washington could beat Georgetown in the first round. Eastern, they've got the leading scorer in the, in the country. Pretty good offense, so that could be an upset. And uh, Kansas in the second round. And I know they're, <laughs> every year you look at Kansas, when are they going to lose? But they could face Wichita State in the second round, and, and Wichita State's, uh, I mean, they like to slow it down. They play good defense. Uh, that's a team that could beat Kansas. Yeah, uh, Buffalo is definitely my uh, 12 over the five. Um, I'll give Wyoming, actually, a, a, fight, a puncher's chance against Northern Iowa, yeah. too. Yeah. That'll be an interesting game. That Wyoming team is, is gritty and just, you know, find – finds a way to win games, and so uh, that'll be one of the more interesting games in the first round, if you ask me, Wyoming and Northern Iowa, but if I'm going to pick a 12 over a 5, I'm going to go with Buffalo. Mm -hmm. uh, Buffalo not only played Kentucky well on the road, they played Wisconsin well on the road, yeah. so I mean, those two teams are arguably favorites to get to the national title game, you know, in a lot of people's minds, so uh, that Buffalo team is, is definitely a, a, a good uh, you know, mid-major team that they could upset some people. The only five I think that I would, would surprise me if they lost would be Arkansas, because I think they're playing really well coming in this tournament. And I like their matchup, but the others I think they could all happen. Yeah, um, but yeah. Um, I go Buffalo. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to go back a little bit, mm -hmm. talking a little bit local. Um, CSU won 27 games this year. Did not get into the NCAA tournament. Do you guys think they got snubbed? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. They got. I mean, we just got done talking about how. UCLA doesn't belong in the tournament. It, you could easily take UCLA out and put CSU in, and I'd be completely fine with that. Yeah, or even a BYU team. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of teams I could look at. Not a lot, but you know, a handful of teams you look at and say I, I like CSU better than that team. And you know, for a team with a top 30 RPI to not get in this tournament, a field of 68, I think is ridiculous. You guys think the Mountain West had something to do with it? They wouldn't take four teams? No, I actually think it was more that they put together a schedule that was designed to have a good RPI. Mm -hmm. uh, right. They, they, you know, purposely scheduled people that they thought were, or, you know, opponents they thought would boost their RPI. And, and RPI is just, uh, you know, one of the metrics used. And, and frankly, it's not even the best metrics anymore. Yeah. And, and so uh, I, I think there was a little bit too much put on CSU's high RPI number, but I, I, I still think CSU deserved to be in the tournament. I think the Mountain West had something to do with it. I think that if uh, 
had Wyoming not won that championship game, I think that CSU would be in this tournament and not Wyoming. Right. Um, so a little bit, I think it had something to do with it. Yeah, they definitely uh, stole a bit there. Yeah, uh, they yeah. stole a bit from somebody, yeah. and it could have been, could very well could have been CSU. Okay, and now it is time to make Final Four and National Championship picks. So, Brian, we'll go ahead and start with your picks. Final Four, yep. we have Kentucky, Arizona. Arizona's going to meet Wisconsin that final eight, the last where they lost last year. I think they're going to get it this year. I like Duke and Virginia. And then the champion, I've got Arizona. Arizona. I will go with uh, Kentucky in the Midwest, uh, Wisconsin in the West, uh, Virginia in the East, and I'm going to go Iowa State in the South. I like oh, wow. that Iowa State team. They, uh, the Big 12 is no joke this year, and they won the Big 12 tournament. Uh, I, I like the way they play. I like Fred Hoiberg as a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take uh, Iowa State um, to upset Virginia and get to the national championship game and uh, play Wisconsin, which will upset oh, wow. Kentucky. Wisconsin and Iowa State in the national championship. And who wins? Who wins that one? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. So yeah. you're, you're, you're saying that the Colorado Buffaloes are going to open up next season with the national runner-up? Yes. Oh, okay. all right. And Good one, luck, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, one, and one final question to bring it back local. Does Tad Boyle have CU back in the NCAA tournament conversation next season? In the conversation, yes. Back in the tournament, we'll have to see, but I think they'll be in the conversation. I think they will be in the tournament next year. I think Tad Boyle is an uh, excellent coach. I think he's, uh, you know, have, has a plan for addressing what was wrong with this year's team. I think he'll get it fixed. I think they'll be back, and I don't really think that a lot of what happened with this year's team was necessarily his fault, although he is the coach and it always, right. you know, the buck stops, stops with him. But I just think there were too many chemistry issues, as I think we're starting to see now here that, you yeah. know, the end of the season is coming about. I think there were too many chemistry issues in that, in that locker room for him to overcome. I'm a, I'm a big Eskia Booker fan, but I think that having him gone is, is huge for this team. That, that right there is going to fix a lot of the chemistry issues. Okay, that's a wrap on our first Daily Camera Sports Roundtable. Make sure you follow these guys on Twitter, at Kyle Ringo, at Brian Howell 33 And make sure you follow Buff Zone and Daily Camera, at Buff Zone and at Daily Camera. And thank you, and enjoy the tournament.